Prime Minister Modi witnessed the first stage operation of the Fast Breeder Reactor on March 4th, 2024, which is part of India's indigenous nuclear program. Prime Minister Modi took a tour of the reactor vault and the control room of the reactor, which is located in Kalpakam in Tamil Nadu. Let me quickly tell you about this atomic power station located at Kalpakam, which is about 80 kilometers south of Chennai. This atomic power station is India's first fully indigenously constructed nuclear power station with two units, each generating 220 megawatt of electricity. Now, what is more interesting is that this facility is also home to India's first large-scale fast breeder reactor. It is operated by Bhavini. Full form of Bhavini is Bharatiya Nabhikiya Vidyut Nigam Limited. It is fully owned by the government of India and it is in full control of the Department of Atomic Energy, incorporated on 22nd October 2003. Now, the main question of this video is what is a fast breeder reactor? Before I explain that, let me explain the working of a regular nuclear reactor. so that you can understand the difference and figure out what is the big deal about developing a fast breeder reactor and how is it going to benefit india in the long run so if you look at a regular nuclear reactor this is the diagram let me go through each section at the core of a nuclear reactor there are numerous fuel rods these metal rods that you see are called fuel rods they are made up of materials such as zirconium alloy the fuel rods are designed to withstand high temperatures and pressures within the reactor core while allowing efficient heat transfer from the nuclear reactions to the surrounding coolant it is similar to having water heating rods you submerge the rod it heats up and in turn heats the water similarly these fuel rods heat up and warm the coolant now many of you must be thinking it looks like iron but iron is not commonly used as a material for fuel rods due to its possibility of getting corroded and other factors that could affect reactor's performance and safety inside these fuel rods is special material called enriched uranium 235 which is stored in small ceramic pellets is tightly packed now what they do is they take fuel rods and place them within the reactor cold in a grid sort of system Then control rods are partially inserted in the reactor core in such a way that the positioning of the control rods blocks and absorbs the uranium atoms and prevents the full initiation of the nuclear reaction because the control rods are made up of materials like boron or cadmium that absorb uranium 235 neutrons and due to their partial insertion the rate of the nuclear reaction doesn't reach its criticality so the first step was loading the fuel then control rod positioning and now it's time for neutron activation The operator of a nuclear reactor initiates and controls the neutron activation process by adjusting the position of the control rods within the reactor core. By moving the control rods out, more and more uranium neutrons are allowed to interact, which further increases the fission reaction. This process is carefully managed by the operators, and they need to moderate the neutron flux within the reactor's core to achieve and maintain the desired power level of the reactor. If the control rods are fully inserted inside the core, they absorb a significant portion of neutrons effectively shutting down the chain reaction. Similarly, withdrawing the control rods fully allows more neutrons to interact with the fuel, increasing the rate of fission reaction and thus the power output of the reactor. That is why it is very important for the operators to continuously monitor various parameters such as reactor's power, temperature and neutron flux to ensure safe and efficient operation of the reactor. Now adjusting the position of the control rods is one of the primary means by which operators maintain control over the reactor's power level and overall performance. As more fission reactions occur, more energy is released in the form of heat. The heat generated by the increased rate of fission reaction is used to produce more steam, which in turn drives the turbines connected to generators to produce more electricity. Now let's understand this nuclear fission reaction more closely. What happens is that a slow moving neutron collides with a specific isotope of uranium that is uranium 235 causing it to split. This process is called fission. It is not fusion, it is fission. It releases a large amount of energy in the form of heat and additional neutrons. The additional neutrons can further collide with other uranium 235 atoms causing them to further split. This creates a chain reaction that sustains the release of heat within the reactor core. Now imagine this nuclear reactor as a fireplace. In a fireplace we use regular wood. Now this regular wood is your uranium 235. So we use regular wood in a fireplace to burn and generate heat, right? Now over time the wood burns up and you will need more wood to keep the fire going. The same thing happens in a regular nuclear reactor. Over time the uranium 235 pellets stored in the fuel rods get used up. The entire fuel assembly is replaced with a fresh one containing new fuel rods. 
Now this takes several years depending on the reactor type and operation. So this is the overall working of a regular nuclear reactor. On the other hand, in a fast breeder reactor, uranium-238 is used as a blanket or you can say as fuel reserve surrounding the core of the reactor for utilizing uranium resources much more efficiently compared to regular reactors. Let me explain. You must be aware of the fact that uranium-238 is naturally present in abundance and it is less enriched than uranium-235. So going back to the firewood comparison, Fast breeder reactors are like that fireplace where regular wood that is uranium-235 fuels the fire. But there is also a special wood that burns simultaneously much slowly that is uranium-238 that can sustain the fire for a longer period thereby increasing the lifespan of the regular wood that is uranium-235. So in a fast breeder reactor the mechanism is the same. At the core of the reactor there are uranium-235 fuel rods and control rods. But these fuel rods are surrounded by a blanket of non-enriched uranium-238. This blanket does not have any specific shape, it is placed in layers and different patterns which will be further developed based on observation and data. Now what is the purpose of having this blanket? The whole purpose of having this blanket is to convert uranium-238 into plutonium-239 by using special fast moving neutrons. Whereas at the core region, slow neutrons are creating nuclear reactions, but on the outside, this blanket will make use of the fast moving neutrons to convert uranium-238 into plutonium-239. That means in a fast breeder reactor, there are typically two types of fission reactions occurring simultaneously. The first one is the fission reaction occurring in the core due to slow moving neutron. And another fission reaction happens in the blanket region surrounding the core, where non-enriched uranium-238 is being converted into plutonium-239 with the help of fast moving neutrons. I've already explained the workings of the core reactor. Let me explain what happens in this blanket region. If you look at this method by using fast moving neutrons, uranium-238 is converted into usable plutonium-239. This way the fast breeder reactor can extend the lifespan of a nuclear fuel and make better use of available resources. So the key element of a fast breeder reactor is the ability to use fast moving neutrons to collide with uranium-238 atoms and simultaneously make uranium-238 atoms to capture some neutrons and undergo conversion to become uranium-239. Now because of the unbalance in the neutron to proton ratio, uranium-239 is unstable and undergoes beta decay, meaning it emits an electron to achieve somewhat stability. In this process, one of its neutrons decays into a proton. This reduces the neutron to proton ratio and transforms into neptunium-239, which is slightly more stable. However, Neptunium-239 is also not that stable and undergoes further beta decay. That is, one of its neutrons decays into a proton to eventually become Plutonium-239, which is capable of sustaining a nuclear fission chain reaction. Plutonium-239 is used as fuel in nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons precisely because of its ability to undergo fission. Now, in a fast breeder reactor, liquid sodium is commonly used as a coolant. Coolant is important in a nuclear reactor. It is used to remove heat generated by nuclear reactions. It also transfers the heat generated in the reactor core to other parts of the plant where it can be used to produce electricity. Coolant also acts as a barrier absorbing radiation emitted from the reactor core. Let me also tell you that fast breeder reactors are still under development and come with their own set of challenges such as requiring more complex technology and potentially posing higher safety risks. However, it has taken India two decades to make the first step towards generating commercial electricity using a fast breeder reactor that produces more nuclear fuel than what it consumes. Fast breeder reactors are a three-stage nuclear program. India has entered into the vital second stage. Once it becomes operational, India will be the second country to have a fully functional fast breeder reactor after Russia. Now you must have also heard about thorium reactors. It has also been said many times that India should use thorium rather than uranium. Why? Because thorium is found in large quantities in the monazite sands of Kerala. Now the question is, can we use thorium-232 in a fast breeder reactor to produce plutonium? The answer is no, not yet. As mentioned earlier, fast breeder reactors typically use this extra uranium-238 non-fissile isotope blanket as the primary breeding material for creating plutonium-239. On the other hand, thorium-232 is similar to uranium-238 in being non-fissile. However, it's classified as fertile material because it can be converted into a fissile isotope through neutron capture. Here is how it happens. 
Thorium-232 is naturally present in abundance. It captures a neutron in a nuclear reactor. This neutron capture by Thorium-232 creates unstable Thorium-233. Thorium-233 then undergoes beta decay and transforms into protactinium-233. Protactinium-233 again further undergoes another beta decay, becoming the fissile isotope uranium-233. So this is the process of using thorium fuel rods in a separate dedicated thermal reactor to generate heat by capturing a neutron and undergoing two beta decays, ultimately transforming into uranium-233, which is a highly fissile isotope. Now this newly bred uranium-233 cannot be used as a fuel in the blanket area of the fast breeder reactor because the blanket area uses fast moving neutrons. Conventional nuclear power reactors use slow moving neutrons to sustain the nuclear chain reaction. In such reactors, uranium-233 can indeed be used as fuel, similar to uranium-235. Now please don't say that, what if we use uranium-233 as core reactor fuel in the fast breeder reactor along with uranium-238 as blanket? While technically it sounds perfect, but compatibility issues and uncontrolled reactivity will be a major concern. So the key point to remember is that uranium-233 and plutonium-239 are separate fissile isotopes with different methods of creation. Thorium-232 is the starting point for uranium-233 production, while uranium-238 is the starting point for plutonium-239 production. So as of now, you need separate reactors if you were to use thorium metals. So thorium-based fuel cycles combined with fast breeder reactors still need to be thought about and have many technical challenges. Alright then, I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.